spicy. Anybody home? Anybody home? Luca, police! Anybody home? Wow. Anybody home? Jesus. Leave your stuff, go! The oh, fire's at the back, go! Everybody head east! Get out of the store now! You know, it was a fire, but it was also like an act of insane mother nature. On a day like that, there was nothing you could do to stop it. Go back! Go back! Just go back! Go back! Jack Palmer, P-O-M-M-E-R. I was on my way to the grocery store, and I saw the smoke, and uh, I just stopped to take some pictures of it. It was mostly just smoke when I got there. I thought it was just a little bit of a brush fire and that they would knock it out pretty quickly. In fact, that's kind of why I, I didn't go home and get a real camera because I figured by the time I got back, it'll be out. The wind was changing and at one moment, the whole fire scene would be covered with smoke and then it would sort of blow away, like reveal it. I was getting some stuff ready for New Year's and all that good stuff, right? I made my way to Costco that day. There was a noticeable fire going on. What a hell, man. It didn't look super bad. It looked like it was a really small wildfire. But as I kind of drove a little bit more, the smoke started to intensify. Look, guys, it's insane. It's right there. Look. There was a shed, but there was a fire and smoke behind it, but the wind was sort of blowing the fire the other direction. And then I noticed it started to smoke, and then it burst into flame. That's when it started to, to look like a big fire and not just a lot of smoke. Me and my fiance were at home kind of just chilling. We saw some smoke out in the out in the distance, and it's Colorado. It was warm. We're used to wildfires in general. Went from just the the little wisp to getting a little bit bigger, getting a little bit bigger, and then all of a sudden you're just watching these clouds just form and change colors. You know, none of us knew how long we even had. It happened so fast, we just kind of had to make decisions and get out of here. Whatever was in our pockets or what we were wearing is what we got out of there with. And at that point, you know, both of us, we were like, oh, like, okay, something bad is, <laughs> is, is coming. Oh my god, bro. I've never been on. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't see. Shit. I can't see. Shit. It was something that I've never seen in my life before. When I turned the car back, that's when I started to get the fear of maybe we should just try to get out of here as quickly as possible. We're going to get crashed on, guys. God help us right now. God help us. Holy. Shit. Holy. Shit. Holy. Shit. Holy. Shit. Holy Did you guys just see that? Go towards Denver! Evacuate now! Oh crap! East, go! Evacuate! We live in Cold Creek Ranch South, and we were here just over 29 years in that house. We were the original owners. It's raining ash, too. And I happened to look out the window and saw that the sky had changed colors. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I didn't see any houses burn. All I saw was a field on fire. 
Got a coat, got my purse. Unplugged the crock pot so the house wouldn't burn down. That's how I always think when I leave, I don't like the crock pot plugged in. I got on Facebook and people were talking about the fire being behind Costco and Target. Evacuate Costco now at eastbound. Leave your cards, go. On December 30th, I woke up with sort of a strange feeling. I, I don't want to say I'm intuitive or anything, but it was just this weird feeling. It was so windy and smoky that people were completely disoriented and trying to find their vehicles and get out safely. Tons of people running out. Stuff was just flying everywhere. It was like a mini Armageddon in my Costco parking lot. And they start calling everybody, calling everybody. And by the time we, I crossed over to Superior, it was black. And then I saw uh, one of the Boulder County uh, trucks that do the animal control. And I'm like, ah, oh, I go with these guys. And then I, I just followed them. And we went to the pet uh, daycare place. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. It's a good boy, come here. Good boy. I'm gonna look inside and see if there's more. Some of the dogs were out and we were able to get all the dogs locally. Puppy! There's one more, there's one more. Puppy. He's a good boy! Come here. There was a dog that escaped and we couldn't grab. And as they were about to roll, the dog, I saw the dog underneath the truck and like, stop, stop! It's underneath the car! Here, here, here. There you go. I'm a combat veteran. I was in the army, and you know, I was in Iraq a couple tours. Actually, there was a moment that it felt like, like I was back in, in Iraq. There was a moment that I actually thought that the whole city was gonna burn. So my name is Maxwell Cook. I'm a PhD student uh, in the Department of Geography at University of Colorado Boulder and part of the Earth Lab. And we study wildfire impacts in the Western US and in the globe. What we do know is that this fire moved incredibly fast. And that was followed by one of the driest six month periods on record really set the stage for there to be a lot of these fine fuels that were really dried out by the time we had an ignition source. Look how fast that's burning. Yeah. My apologies, Go back! Go back! Go back! Go back! Just go back! That is go exactly back. what we saw. And then sadly, one by one, like dominoes, the homes are igniting the next door homes and it spreads through the neighborhood. Command of 2660. I have multiple houses involved up here on Hillside. I have it's like four type one apparatus. We could use additional up here. Otherwise we're gonna have a lot of fire here in a moment. The house was smelling smoky uh, no, nothing on the block was on fire yet. What do I know? I don't know anything about fires, but I figured I got like at least 10, 20 minutes, but I wasn't going to use all that. I stood by the window to look west, and all I saw was the building smoke coming in. But then what got me nervous was it was cold that day, but the heat was coming through the window, and I could feel my face uh, like hot, like I stuck my head in the oven. So that's when I said, okay, I gotta get out. I didn't even grab anything and 
you know, in retrospect, there was a handful of things I should have grabbed. <laughs> Leave! You're ready to cut loose. Okay, All units on hillside from 2660. Let's go ahead and cut. I'm afraid we're not going to be able to get out of the neighborhood. 2660, you got heavy fire in the buildings on the exit. I'll on hillside at the bottom. 2660, 2105. I'm at 88th and Dylan with Marcelo. Where do you need me? Just push everything east. Copy, I'm out with him. Marcelo, we got fired there. We need to get them going. It's a difficult situation because you understand that something they love and cherish is in, in danger. She's got two kids. I got to take her to Dylan. I have two puppies. Park. And I'm pregnant. Are you two kids or two puppies? puppies. I'm no, turn your car around. I apologize. I get that. Turn your car around. You know, it's it's turning people away. It's not fun, but you know, you have to do it. You know, as a pet owner myself, you know, that was the big thing. I think everybody wanted to go get their pets, and it's, you know, it's tough to do that. The area is evacuated. Back up and turn around. Back up and turn around. Do this, dude. Do you know how many people with dogs I've turned around? Turn around. I'm sorry. Turn around. Dude, I feel free. Do you, you think I like doing this? Go. go! I'll put the wrist. Let me go. You take it. Go. Everybody out. Everybody out. A little after 2.30 or so, we headed up to Boulder to help. I remember there was a lot of smoke, a very thick smoke that we were driving basically right toward. 36 was empty uh, because they had shut it down, so just it was unbelievable. I had never seen anything like that. Looking east. Well, I think they're trying to save Paul's house. I'm up on the old railroad tracks. I don't even know what I can do to their house to help. It was a day where I felt like I was making thousands of very high concentration, high input decisions, and not any of them made any difference. There was nothing you could do. I know the people that were the first to leave in my neighborhood, and I know the people that were the absolute last, 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 last human being to walk out of there. And the net result was the same. I watched my neighbor's house catch on fire. I saw the corner of my house starting to catch on fire. Well, it was fairly well engulfed. So it really didn't matter how much you fought the fight. All you got was more video of your house burning And it's those embers that are just so quick, especially in a howling wind. Embers can travel more than a mile. They carry the fire. Some of them can be as big as your hand. First thing I remember is a fire just north of Boulder, and I uh, got my camera and started heading that way. Just checked in with command there, and uh, they just said, go ahead and take some photos, and just started snapping. Must have fire, Boulder.
Boulder Mountain, 2332, Allen Park, Heidi, Lyons, BCFDO. Yes, an AMR responded to North Bell Hills Highway and Middle Fork Road. 658, I North believe there's Highway going to be Middle three Fork units total going to that. All units responding two, 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 to the Middle Fork uh, fire were receiving three, three, four, four, three to four foot flames, possibly 20 by 20 in area. Good morning, sir. Man, you've got me arrived. Order, this is going to be Middle Fork Command. One home threat, 150 yards from the flaming front. Eight foot flame length, uh, threatening power lines. You could hear it was a distressing situation for them. Fire was spreading fast and uh, winds were very high, extremely worrisome. So it was a day where any fire with high wind was going to be a big concern. 1,641 66, uh, just passing the fire. It is on the east side of the road. I'm heading to Station 1 for vehicles. Hey, what's the attack channel for this Middle Fork fire and uh, command name? Because it started earlier, it would have had so much more time to uh, develop into something larger than the Marshall Fire. Much larger. It was a lucky day, in a way, on the Middle Fork Fire. I didn't think our house was going to burn down because of the fire across the street. Then about 4.30, between 4.30 and 5, my husband called me and he says, our house is gone. Um, I'm seeing it burning on TV. I was numb. I was just so surreal that the whole neighborhood was gone. If this is happening in a place like Colorado in December, I can't imagine what's to come. When people look at Superior, what they need to understand is that this can now happen anywhere. Places where people live, high dense populations, and every community needs to be on high alert. A lot of these people had just bought their homes and then you're hearing these stories of just everything going away and like all their dreams and, and thank God very few lives were lost, but you know, even days after you can't forget about the fire because you, you can barely drive in Superior without smelling the fire. And there's this little weird part of your brain that even though you're looking at everything being burned, you still think that your house is going to be the one that survives, you know. Hey, Connor. Um, just want you to know that, you know, life is sometimes. Life can throw you some big hooks. And you have to just keep going and you have to keep going, and you have to keep going, and you just gotta keep fighting, and you never, ever stop. You never stop, you never stop, okay? I wanted him to know that, uh, I, I did what I could to try to save our house. And there's just some times when you can't. And, 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 and you, I just wanted him to know that there's a way to pick up the pieces maybe and figure it out and move on. And um, I don't know, it was a moment where I felt like I needed to, to say that, you know? Spicy. Wow. Jesus. 
houses. Full neighborhood just gone. You can't even see. It's so windy. I hope uh, as a community we can learn from this. And I guess I'm grateful for having a chance to start over.